So we've all been in that situation where you've created a strategy, you've back tested it, and then when you finally go live, it completely flops and does not perform at all like your back test. Now, one of the main reasons for this occurring is that you've overfit your strategy to the exact set of historical data that you are backtesting against. And in this video, I'm going to show you a strategy that you can use to combat overfitting so that you don't go live with strategies that aren't based on anything real. And so you don't get fooled by randomness quite as much as you would otherwise. So on the screen here, we have a backtest that I did on a strategy that I made up. It's a super simple RSI based strategy. You just sell when the RSI is high and buy when the RSI is low. So this might be some potential strategy that we want to run. Now, as we can see, this is running on Bitcoin and Bitcoin had a sort of minus 15% down month. So not great, but our strategy managed to return about 3%. So it stayed flat. And so you might think that this is potentially a good strategy for use in a bear market. It certainly seems to have done quite well on this data set that we've selected here. But the problem is with this, it's very difficult to tell if our strategy is actually finding a signal that we can repeatedly exploit to make money or whether we just happen to have got lucky with the exact parameter combinations that we've set. And the way we deal with that is we test our strategy over many different timeframes. So this is a 30 day back test here. This is for the month of August, but to get a more realistic view of how the strategy actually performs in a 30 day period, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the strategy over every single 30 day period for this year. And then we're going to graph the distribution of returns for all of those different back tests. And I'll cut to the chase here. If we plot those out, as we have in this nice plotly diagram here, you can see on the left here, these are all the values of the returns for each 30 day window. So each dot here represents a different 30 day window and the returns that we gain during that time. The box plot on the right here shows you the median Q3 maximum minimum Q1 of your returns. And so we see that the median return on a 30 day period was actually minus 8.5%. And if you look at the distribution of returns here, to me, that looks pretty much completely random. If I set a random number generator between minus 35 and say 15, you'd expect results pretty much like this one. And so this is giving us a really strong hint that our strategy isn't actually anything special, that it only works over that particular time period that I back tested it on. If I look at different time frames, we can see that the distribution of returns appears to be essentially random. And so if you were to realistically employ this strategy, in reality, the amount of returns that you're going to get over a 30 day period can essentially be modeled by picking a random number between 12 and minus 35, which to me does not sound that appealing. So I've rambled on long enough here. Let's actually dig into the code behind these two different plots so that you can adapt this for yourself and your own strategy to do some validation and make sure you're not being fooled by randomness. So we'll open up a terminal here and we'll get going. So I'm in a regular Python ENV here and I've got backtesting.py, pandas, some other libraries installed. I'm using backtesting.py here, but realistically you could use any backtesting library you want, VectorBT, Backtrader, or your own custom backtesting library. The strategy that we're employing here is completely framework independent. So we'll open up our example code here and I can break down the code and show you how it all works. So in the first example here, we've got some data. Now, this is just a CSV file on my computer. So if I go and look at that, 
it's the one for August here. So it's just a CSV file full of one minute candle data. So this is the Unix timestamp, open high, low, close volume, and then a bunch of other stuff that we don't really need. If you're curious, you can get this data from Binance directly. If you go to data.binance.vision, you can just download them as zip files here. You extract them and that'll give you a nice CSV, which you can grab these one minute candles from. It's free and publicly available on their website. So that's the data set that I'm using. Obviously, feel free to use your own in your own backtests. So I'm loading that in here with pandas, nothing special. I only want the first five columns. So I want the dates, the open, the high, the low, the close. And then I'm just giving those names. So fairly straightforward here with the read CSV. I'm then going ahead and converting the time column to a date time format. That's quite important actually for backtesting.py, but if your backtesting framework doesn't need that, you can just use Unix timestamps and that'll be just fine as well. We've got this function here and all that does is let us optimize this strategy. I'm not gonna use that in this tutorial. And then we've got the actual strategy down here. Now, if you've never used backtesting.py before, I'll give you a little bit of intuition about exactly how this backtest works. So each class is going to represent a single strategy that we're using to trade. It inherits from a class called strategy that comes with backtesting.py. And we imported that at the top of the file. We set some parameters here. So this is our upper and lower bound because this is an RSI trading strategy, as well as the window for our RSI. The init function here, which you define, you use that to define indicators using self.i. You then feed into self.i the function you want to apply, the data you want to apply it to, and any extra parameters. So ta.rsi is the pandas ta function for RSI. We pass that in there as a parameter we pass in the closing data as a series. So the dot S there signifies that we're passing it in as a panda series. And of course we pass in the RSI window, which in our case is just 23 here. So we grab that from self dot RSI underscore window. That allows us to declare this self dot RSI indicator. And then this next function here actually allows us to lay out our buying and selling logic. So it's relatively simple to read. Essentially, this function runs on every single bar. And if there's a crossover of the RSI, so if the RSI goes above the upper bound here, then we want to close out our position. Simple enough. If that doesn't happen, if there's a crossover of the lower bound below the RSI, well, then I want to start buying. So very simple logic. RSI goes above the upper bound, we sell. If the RSI goes below the lower bound, we buy. Very, very, very simple logic. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about backtesting.py, I have a free one hour course here available on YouTube that you can go through and that will bring you up to speed. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this validation strategy that I'm using does work with any backtesting framework. So if you don't want to learn backtesting.py, that's fine, just keep watching as long as you get the general gist of what's going on here. So this next line down here, that actually creates this backtest object. So we start with 10 million in cash, we have a 0.2% commission, and we use this particular strategy on our data. This then runs it using these particular parameter values. And then at the bottom here, we just print out the stats and we plot everything. So I'll run this here just so that we can see what's happening should run relatively quickly, even though we have quite a few candles since this is one minute data. So here we are, we have our nice graph, we can zoom in. These little tractor beams here represent the different trades. We can look up here at profit and loss on any particular trade. We can see the equity curve up at the top. Hopefully that's all nice and intuitive for you. So that's great, we've walked through the basics of this strategy, how it works. So what do we need to do to build on top of this to do our verification 
and validation of the strategy to make sure that we're not fooling ourselves by overfitting to our particular data. So the way I'm going to do that is I went ahead and downloaded all of these different data files here. So I downloaded them right from the beginning of 2022 to the end of 2022. Obviously, feel free to use whatever data you have and ideally as much of it as possible. What I then did is I combined it all into one master CSV here. So you see this one is 53 megabytes, whereas these are about six to seven megabytes. So we've got our master CSV here, one minute candles for the whole year so far. Let's go back here and I'll open up my other example, which actually does the validation. So example two. So it's broadly the same here. So you'll notice I've imported Plotly Express. You'll want to make sure you do that. So we actually do the plotting at the end there. The reading of the data is pretty much exactly the same. Obviously, we're using a different CSV file. Again, you don't need this optimization funk here. I don't know why that's in there. The strategy is completely the same. We have not messed with that at all. The only thing that we're adding in here is these last few lines. So it might look a little bit overwhelming here but I'll break it down line by line. So we're establishing a returns list here. So for every 30 day window that we test, we're gonna calculate the returns and add it to this list. So at the end, we can do some analysis. So this variable here is just the amount of minutes in a day. It's just quite useful to have that later on. So just 24 times 60. And then we open up this for loop here. So X is gonna be our counter. We're going to start at 30 multiplied by the amount of minutes in a day. So basically, X is going to start about a month into our data. And we'll see why in the next line. X is going to stop at the length of df plus 1. If you remember how the range function works in Python, this is exclusive, whereas this is inclusive. So we include this value but the maximum value of x will actually be length of df, not length of df plus one. I'm just doing this to make sure that we include all of the data. And then you can provide a third variable here to range. And this is how many it's going to skip between each iteration. So in mine, I'm skipping minutes in day. So basically on every single iteration, skip one day forward and do that from 30 days in until the end of the data frame. That's what this line does. So in this line here, we actually do our back test. Now, it's very much the same as our original example. We're still passing in the RSI oscillator here, same as before, nothing's changed. Cash is still the same, commission is still the same. The thing that has changed here is the range of our data that we're passing into the back test. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the data frame and I'm slicing it. And I'm slicing it to extract a 30 day window of time. So I'm going from X minus 30 times minutes in a day to X. And the difference between these two values is 30 times minutes in a day, otherwise known as 30 days worth of minutely candles. That's why we started at this value here so that we could take it away. And so in the very first iteration, this will go from zero to 30 days. And then in the next iteration, because it skips a day, it will go from one day to 31 days, so on and so forth, all the way until we get to the end of the data frame. This is gonna look very similar in other backtesting frameworks like a vector BT. You'll basically just want to slice into your signals as well as the price data that you pass in and just slice into them with this slice and that should work. We then calculate our stats here. So this is just gonna give us our return values. Again, we're using the same parameters that we used before because we want to test this particular strategy. And then we append those returns onto our returns list here. So hopefully that is fairly straightforward. We go through all of the data year to date in 30 day intervals. And we test every single 30 day interval so that we'll have lots of different data. What we then do is we plug that returns list 
into Plotly Express here, literally one line of code, and that will generate the box plot for us here. The points equals all option, what that does is it shows this on the side here. If you don't do that, then you just get the box plot here. And then we do fig.update layout. That's just to give a title on the X and Y axis. So these are the default ones here. You get a variable and value. But if you run it with this option, it will show a strategy and returns percentage. And then finally, we do a fig.show and that actually pulls this up as a browser window. I'll run this here just to give you the gist of how it works. So basically, it's just going to go through every 30 day window and give us a value here for how the strategy performed. You can see it's not doing too great. Nearly every month is negative. It'll take a little while here because we've got like 200 different data points, but I already re pre computed them so we can have a look at them here. And so you can think about every data point here as being a potential scenario should you run this bot for a 30 day period. It's all very well looking at a backtest for a given month. But if you look at the distribution here, it's quite likely that if you were to just run it for a month naively, you'd end up with minus 25% at the end of the month, which psychologically is very, very difficult to handle. And again, if we look at the distribution of returns, there's no discernible pattern. Here. Looks like our new one just calculated there. So we've got our returns and strategy labels properly showing. And so the main point of this video was to show that thinking in terms of distributions rather than particular cherry picked examples can be very helpful when deciding when to run a strategy live. If all you looked at was this backtest, you might think that's an amazing strategy and you should definitely try it out with your hard earned cash. But if we do a little bit more research and backtest over a number of 30 day periods to get an idea of what your average 30 day results are going to look like, this strategy no longer looks like such a good strategy, which means that we've done our job in backtesting which is largely to remove strategies that don't show promise. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.